Hello students, your piano teacher Tim here from Piano Lessons on the Web, the classroom dedicated to giving you the opportunity to power up your piano skills and share them with the world. And today I'm going to be giving you a lesson or some tips rather on teaching yourself piano if you do not have a teacher at hand. And um, we're basically going to talk about how to teach yourself using YouTube and other online resources. The one thing I want to tell you is the obvious. And we're going to go from obvious to least obvious, so make sure to stick around um, later on for some better tips. So we got start from the beginning. One problem a lot of students have when teaching themselves is finding where to start. You want to start learning the layout of the piano, the basics of rhythm, and how to read music. I have a playlist, this is why I brought this up, I have a playlist that teaches you these topics. I'm going to remember to put it in the description once I have the real video posted. Okay, the next thing I want to tell you is that you want to develop a practice schedule. To become successful at learning piano, you must develop a good practice schedule. You want to practice as close to seven days a week as possible and for at least 30 minutes. Check out my free ebook, link is in the description, to learn more about what you should be practicing and when you should be practicing. If you're a beginner, you're gonna wanna start out from the beginning, like I said. You don't wanna be jumping to, um, well actually I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit, so maybe I won't talk about it right now. But you wanna pace yourself and start from um, the beginning. And my free ebook, um, actually even if you're an intermediate or advanced, really breaks down what you should be practicing and when. So make sure to check that out. So number two here was develop a practice schedule stick to it treat it like your practice time like it's an obligation like it's a class like it's a your job like you're gonna get in trouble if you do not practice and actually once you get over the hump of it takes a few weeks of getting that practice time in it's gonna be like pulling teeth at first maybe but once you continue at it go at it for a few weeks you will uh, it'll get a lot easier and then in fact you'll actually look forward to it believe it or not i was the same way with um you know you know exercise in the beginning that i really um you know was really hard, having trouble finding the time to uh, put in the exercise but once i got used to it got going it got a lot easier all right let's take a look at our next topic okay i want to talk about finding music to play if you're um you know going online so starting out you want to find music that is appropriate for the beginner Start with nursery rhymes such as Itsy Bitsy Spider, Jack and Jill, or Happy Birthday. Not only are they easy to learn, but they are for the most part public domain, meaning that you can find them for free. So a little tip I have for you is you want to type in the title of a piece you want. You know, we're going to go to Google right now. So you type in the title of a piece you want plus piano sheet music. A little tip, extra tip is if you type in PDF too, Sometimes it'll bring up better results. So let's go here um, online and I'm gonna type in um, happy birthday piano sheet music and see what that comes up with. So you can kind of just go down the list to see if um, you find something that's suitable for you. A lot of these easy ones, like I said, you're gonna find because they are public domain. The these are real easy, these are almost too easy for a lot of you, but as you can see, I found one right away. Um, so keep scrolling down. Um, and if you can't find something, like I said, put PDF after the file name and it will become a lot better. So start out with nursery rhymes, um, you know, the simplest that you can think of. Do not start at Fur Elise or, you know, um, you know, Moonlight Sonata or anything like that. Okay, and then uh, let's take a look at the next tip I have for you. Okay, the next thing I want to tell you is to sit up straight and curve your fingers because that's what teachers are for, right? To tell you those two things. Well, they tell you a little bit more than that, but that's really a lot of the things that you're going to be missing not having a teacher next to you. You are missing part of the experience, but you got if you keep some things in mind, you can actually, um, you know, at least help mitigate some of those problems. So let's get into it a little bit more. The main drawback... Um, okay, is not having direct feedback to not having a teacher. The most common feedback you're going to get will be about sitting up straight and curving your fingers. So keep these in mind while play, playing, playing, sorry about that, <laughs> playing, there we go. 
He is a mind wolf while playing. Come on, go away. There we go. And use a mirror or record yourself when playing if necessary. So if you're teaching yourself piano, um, you know, every phone these days pretty much has a camera. Every laptop pretty much has a camera. Um, it doesn't need to be super high quality. Just put, put, put it next to you or have a mirror next to you so you can see whether you're sitting up straight or not. Chances are, if you're anything like me, you're going to sit up straight when you first enter the lesson or the, you know, the practice session. But as you go, as you go, you lean down more and more and more and more and more. And this is a big problem you want to avoid. And, you know, having those things nearby so you can actually look at yourself is a great way to do it. Actually recording yourself playing as well is also a good idea. You don't need to do it all the time, but every once in a while and actually teaching yourself on your own, it will help you keep track of uh, like the progress that you're making. We're going to get into this in one of our student questions here in a little bit, but let's get on to the next tip. Okay, the next tip I kind of already covered this is to record yourself playing audio wise, but even a video would be great of, of your fingers and your posture. Like I said, so you can actually critique yourself. The next thing I have to tell you is learn music theory. A big mistake, we've talked about this in some of the other problem videos that, you know, the problems students face is that they don't, they skip over music theory because they think it's boring or they think it's unnecessary or they read online that they don't really need it. That is a big mistake in my opinion uh, and I have been teaching for quite a while. Music theory is essentially the study of how music works. This will give your brain much more information to grab a hold of while playing and it can really help you improve don't make the mistake of skipping music theory so for instance if you're on the piano and you know your chords you know c chord and f chord a g chord well as soon as you see those on your sheet music you're going to be able to identify them and because you've been playing them and studying them you're going to be able to just find them so much faster rather than reading each individual note okay wait this one's an f this one's an a this one's to say it's like okay that's an f chord boom that's a d chord boom that's an f sharp minor chord boom so um, that's one way a scales is another thing like if you see a passage in a piece of music and you know instantly you're like oh that's a g scale you know the fingering you know everything you have so much more information to get you playing um, the right thing so don't skip out on music theory and by the way, I didn't like music theory when I first started learning it, but I love music theory now. I don't know why. It really just gets my brain going. And, you know, that's how you kind of find out about things you like or you don't like in life is by doing. So get out there and learn uh, music theory. Another tip I thought you should know if you do not have a teacher is to sight read every day or as close to every day. At least sight read uh, every time you practice. Sight reading is reading a piece of music from sight, and developing this skill will allow you to learn pieces much faster. I'll try to include, uh, when I post this video, a link to a resource to where you can find lots of sight reading examples. Um, there are some good books on Amazon as well. I'll try to include some uh, links to those also. All right. So remember to sight read, remember your music theory, remember to sit up straight, record yourself, and all that stuff. Um, but let's take a look for a second. Let's take a look at some community or classroom, or student rather, student questions. So let's take this first question and answer it together. Okay, Tanny Shaw, our great student, asks, how can you tell if your practice sessions are pointless slash ineffective versus effective and productive? This is a terrific question, you know, especially if you do not have a teacher, you're going to have to know this. Um, I talked about this a little bit during the lesson, record yourself uh, with video. And what actually what you want to do is record yourself maybe at the beginning of a month and then record yourself again at the beginning of a next month and compare those two recordings and compare you know, you're, if you're making progress, you're going to be able to hear the difference in those. Also, if you follow the tips I have in my free piano practice guide, which I've included in the description, that will give you some more tips on uh, how to have productive practice sessions, what you should be working on. Honestly, if you're focusing in and working on the things that I tell you, like, um, you know, warm-ups warm such as scales, 
chords, arpeggios, and then going into simple pieces, learning those. Don't always start from the beginning when you um, are learning a piece for a long period of time. I mean, the first time you look at a piece, start from the beginning. But as you learn, like, a, say, a four-page piece, and you've been working on it for two weeks, don't start at the beginning every time. Start, like, maybe on the second or third page, because that'll really help make those pages a lot better. Because if you start from the beginning, first page all the time, the first page is going to be ah, immaculate. It's going to be amazing. And then second page is going to be like, that's okay, that's good. And then third page is going to be like, um, that's all right. And then the fourth page is going to be uh, really, really terrible. So start from, you know, those different pages. Um, so long as you are focused during your practice, do not meander and noodle around, you know, the entire time. Only noodle around at the end. And what I mean by noodle around is just kind of like making up songs. Unless that's part of your routine, you know, improv or, or something like that. Or playing songs that you'll, you know, like a pop song you're trying to play. Uh, but it's not really part of like your practice strategy and your you know your group of pieces that you're trying to learn. Save that stuff for the end. Focus in in your main practice time on the stuff that matters, and you will make progress. But record yourself, and you'll be able to hear the difference. Another terrific question here. I didn't even think about this one making this lesson. I don't think I've ever talked about it in the channel before. Is progressing? This is by Alexander, by the way. Is progressing quick too quickly dangerous? I've been playing piano for the last four months, and I've gotten the teacher two months ago. I was able to read music, but now am fluent. I'm starting uh, to learn Chopin preludes. That's pretty impressive for two months. And number four and 28, number seven, two months ago, and I could barely play hands together. Is this kind of development dangerous for long-term piano play? I would like to play for years to come and do not want to push into anything dangerous. Well, I'm not as worried about it because you have a teacher. I really can't tell you because I've, I've never heard you play. There is such a thing as a student who is... Um, you know, maybe not prodigy level, but like really talented. You might have a lot of talent. You might be able to learn very quickly. I have, in a very rare instance, had a couple of students that were able to get to that level like unbelievably quick. And you, you would think they were playing for years, um, but they've only been playing for a few months. And, you know, me as a teacher, I choose to push them a, a bit more. Uh, because of that so it might it's not necessarily a bad thing it's not necessarily destroying you in the long run to do anything like that if you have a teacher that you're working with and so long as they are um, a fairly competent teacher they probably are doing this on purpose giving you these types of pieces to play um, so long as you're learning like music theory and you're learning, you know, your scales and things building up to those pieces, you can st still learn those also. Um, and I don't think it will hurt you. Now, if you're working on them for, you know, well, you said when you first started to play them, you couldn't, you couldn't play them hands together, right? So now, um, I don't think you mentioned in the question, how are you doing it now? Um, are you doing way better now after two months of playing or are you still struggling if you're still struggling like they're still beating you into the ground those pieces of the Chopin preludes after two months um, then you probably do want to try something easier but if you start out having problems with a piece you know I have problems with Chopin preludes when a lot of them when I sight read them or I'm reading through them the first few times or maybe in the first three or four times you know well, I don't read the whole thing. I do like page a few times, the next page a few times, learn them like that. But um, I do get better at them, meaning that they're probably an appropriate level for me. A, a good piece that is at an appropriate level for you in terms of your repertoire will challenge you in the beginning, push you just a little bit outside your comfort zone, but you will be able to catch up. So it's um, after two months, you should notice some progress. If you're not, if it's beating you up, after two months, you might want to slow down. But no, I, th I think you're fine. You do have a teacher guiding you. You're probably probably okay. But think about what I said and see if it applies to you. And uh, if you want to follow up with a comment when I post the whole recording to this, let me know. And I'll try to take a look for you and give you some more advice. Great question, though. We got two questions here from um, Masaki. Masaki-sama. How often, or Lord Masaki, I guess, 
How should how often should I use the metronome? Great question. Not all the time, but you should be. Oh yeah, did I have this question up on the? Oops. Up on the thing. Okay, Masaki Sama says, uh, "How often should I use the metronome?" Sorry, I didn't put that up there. If I didn't. Um, okay, you should use the metronome. That's a good question. You shouldn't use the metronome when you're like first learning the notes of a piece. In most cases, I don't know. You should honestly use it um, as a uh, as a review device. So, like, once you learn a page of music, then try playing it through with the metronome slowly, and then that will kind of help you catch any uh, rhythmic mistakes you're having with that page. And then what you do is once you learn um, all the pages, and you're doing like a uh, a run through, and you're trying to get the speed up, it's also very good at increasing speed. Because what you can do is you can try to play the whole thing at 70 beats per minute. And then once you do that, bump it up to 80, bump it up to 90, you know, each playthrough. So long as you can manage that. And that helps you gradually increase your speed and um, clear up mistakes. So use it at your discretion, I guess. It might not be what you want to hear. Um, but use it, I would say, like, towards not the first time you play, but towards the beginning to correct any rhythmic mistakes and then um, towards the end when you're ready to start getting this thing up to performance speed but not all the time okay let's take a look here uh the same quite same person here oops i want to masaki sama uh, how can i evaluate myself okay i kind of covered this already I like to know my current level and where i am ready to move on to the next level um, so record yourself each month, compare your recordings. You should notice uh, a thing in your play, a difference in your playing rather um, in terms of knowing if you're like on the appropriate level for not. I don't know if there's like a way way to do that. What I would do is I would learn a piece, learn that piece for um, you know either a few weeks to a few months, and then look at recordings on YouTube. To see how other people are playing it. And that might give you an idea if you're playing it up to snuff. But the thing you got to be careful of is people who put videos on YouTube don't aren't always professional pianists either. So they might not even be at a level you're at. So that's a hard question I would do. I would do the recording thing once a month so you can track your own practice and really compete against yourself. Okay, Sanjay Paul says, Sir, I'm a new learner from India. And fully depend on your free videos on YouTube. We have a lot of viewers from India. Welcome. Uh, is it sufficient to learn piano? Okay. Uh, uh, what percentage will it help? So this is a great question that I should have touched on more during the lesson, but great that we have these questions. So how far can you get? The question is how far can you get on your own? Can you go all the way, become a professional level pianist, all on your own. I would say probably not being realistic, but you can learn on your own. You can learn pieces on your own. You can develop your technique on your own, develop a good practice strategy. All the things we talked about today, you can pretty much do on your own. If you're serious about music, you want to get into a music school, you want to take it all the way. You really do need to at least meet with a teacher every few weeks, maybe at least once a month. Every week would be great. Um, and meet with them to get their feedback. Yeah, so you can get pretty far on your own, but if you're looking to get to that professional level, please go out and seek a teacher, if possible. I know it might not be possible for you, but you can get quite good at piano on your own so long as you follow proper instruction and you're aware of you know what you're doing. Second question is from Sanjay Paul. says, when I come across a new song and practice from its sheet music and again another song and so on, I feel... Playing piano, all about memorizing each song's in chords. Oh, when I come across a new song and practice from its sheet music, and again another song and so on, I feel playing piano. Okay, let me let me answer this the best I can because I half understand the question. All right, so it's not all about memorizing and chords those things do help and as you practice a song over and over again you will begin to memorize it but still keep your eyes on the page you know even after you've been learning a song for a while because you'd be surprised i've learned songs for a year before 
And I was really carefully looking through the sheet music, and I was like, man, I've been playing this note wrong the whole time, you know, for a whole year. And those those mistakes are the hardest to correct. And that was because after I started learning a while, I started depending on my memory too much. Now, don't get me wrong. You want to uh, train your memory, too, by trying to play through the piece without any music. But you also want to go back each time you play or each time you practice Go through your pieces and look at the sheet music. Really try to actively look at it and follow along that way. Um, memorizing helps. Learning chords does help, but it's not what it's all about. So make sure to keep looking at that sheet music to correct your mistakes. Okay, Winston asks, I feel the same as Sanjay's. It's like memorizing when practicing a song on both hands simultaneously and coming across that song after a week, and then it seems to be kind of difficult again. You know, this is actually pretty common, especially if you're a newbie, uh, where it, like once you spend some time away from a song and come back, it can be a little bit difficult. Still, like if you're learning pieces and, and these pieces are, you want to become part of your repertoire, meaning regular pieces that you have learned and memorized, play those through those pieces at least once each time you practice just to keep them refreshed. So that's what I recommend for that issue. Do you like my YouTube lessons and you're thinking, man, Tim, I really wish there was a way to take my playing and my understanding of music to that next level? Well, there is. Over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, I have over 20 courses designed to help you learn a lot more about piano, music theory, improv, sight reading, ear training, and pretty much anything I thought that you would need to become a well-rounded musician. Um, you have, you're going to really like what, if you like what you see over here on the YouTube channel, you're really going to like what you see over there because you, there's instructional videos along with practice examples, real music to play, uh, activities and assignments to really help you not only learn each topic, but master it, practice it as well. Okay. And there's also a 30 day money back guarantee on any course or any course pack. So what are you waiting for? Go over to piano lessons on the right now enroll in some courses it's a great way to take your playing to the next level and help out the channel at the same time so piano lessons on the use code youtube i almost forgot this part use code youtube for 15 percent off any order so go over there right now and pick up some courses